Welcome back to another episode of MLB The Show 24's franchise mode featuring the Charlotte Racers. Now, things are getting down to the wire. We have the draft coming up very, very soon. Our team, though, is not doing very good. If you kind of look at our record right now, we are very bad. 35 and 56, we are the worst team in our division. But you know what? Some things and players aren't working out, and that's why we're trading somebody. Now, we've had a lot of guys that have worked out for our team, but one of the guys that definitely has not worked out has been Blake Snow. He is 4-9 and nine in the season. It's just not working out. This dude has just been... A 4.06 ERA. He's had some issues. His ERA has actually come down a little bit. He's actually on a hot streak if you kind of look at this screen right here. And that's why I feel like now is really the time to trade him. And there's been a team that has been, you know, floating some offers our way that I think is perfect. So the deal the Tigers came to us with is going to be Kerry Carpenter, a right fielder, Matt Manning, a starting pitcher, and Riley Green, a potential superstar in center field. Yes, I know we already have Drew Jones. We have a story Ruiz already at center field. We can move one of these guys over to left field, and that'll be perfectly fine. We have James Wood in right field, and that'll be perfectly fine. And we will figure out who is going to be the best center fielder for us. And once we figure that out, maybe we trade one of those guys too. Our biggest problem is not having enough guys on our roster to really get the job done. And now we're going to have an abundance of talent in the outfield. I'm here for that. And if you kind of look at Matt Manning, Matt Manning has the potential to be really that guy for us. The potential, he's got pretty good stuff overall. We need to work on some things with him, but a quality guy in our rotation, we can definitely use. And if you look, He's the inverse of what Blake Snell's record is. He's 9-4 and four in the season. He's got a 2.33 ERA. He's only given up 31 earned runs, where I think Blake Snell's given up 51 earned runs. So this guy, with more innings pitched, is a much better opportunity for us. So we're definitely going to be using that. And Kerry Carpenter could be a pretty solid guy for us, but again, with James Wood in right field, I don't need a right fielder. And we have the other young guys we want to obviously bring up and develop. So Kerry Carpenter, we're going to immediately turn around and trade him. And we're going to solely go for prospects because, again, we need to fill out our farm system. It's due to right now. So will we take this trade? Absolutely, Detroit. We'll take that trade. So the trade we're going to basically work through here is we're getting Jose Cornillo and Kumar Rocker, who, again, has some injury concerns. But we think we can obviously work with for Kerry Carpenter and Gunnar Hoagland. I think this is a really good deal. We got the salaries to match. Even though they're kind of messed up with their budget, it still works out because the salaries are pretty much spot on. So we're now going to get, for a guy that wasn't going to play for our team anyways, we ship him out of town, and we get a pitcher that we definitely want in Kumar Rocker, and then Cornelio, who, if he's great, that works out even better for us. All right, it is time to go to the Major League Draft, and uh, we've got to figure things out. So before it, right, we're going to get a little draft queue here. We're going to put some of the guys that we're eyeing the most on our little draft board, and hopefully we get some of those guys, because we got a couple of guys that are steals here. All right, so we got a number of guys we already have on our board. A lot of them are starting pitchers. Literally, everybody you see there is a starting pitcher, but we do have some position players. All right, it is time for the MLB draft to begin. We have the fourth pick in the first round, and then, you know, things kind of move on from there, and we go to the 39th pick in the second round. So things will speed up for us a little bit, but I'm excited to see what happens. Let's get it. Who's the first pick? Pedro Camacho, the guy that was eighth overall. Okay, now I'm nervous because I thought my guy was going to fall. I don't think he's falling now. Okay, who's the second pick? Don't be any of my guys. JT Sanchez. Okay, we didn't really have him. Wow, we had him ranked 79th. Okay, I don't know if he's good or bad. Who's next? Not my guy. Oh, they took Darren Rodriguez. That means we had to take Chiavo. Okay, they took Darren Rodriguez, who was the top guy on our board. Uh, Jermaine Chiavo, I think, is really the best guy available. He's really interested in our team. His bonus demand is pretty solid. He was ranked 96. We have him ranked number four after doing 100% of the scouting on him. Assuming that is accurate, I feel like this guy could really be him. So we are going to draft Jermaine Schiavo. Welcome to the team, young fella. We'll find out after the draft what his actual stuff is, but this 18-year-old could be the savior of our franchise. Is he the next great starting pitcher? I don't know. His bonus to me is 5.8 million. It's at 729,000, buddy. Okay, as we head into round two, only two of our guys are left on our board. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm thinking we're going to go after Philip Shibuya. He's another starting pitcher. He was not ranked. We're seeing him in 81st. I feel like we maybe we sit on that a little bit. And then Bonner was a guy that we only scouted 50%. He was not ranked. We found him at 99th. Maybe these guys are truly ranked in, like, the 90s. So maybe we'll sit on both of those and just wait for later in the draft. Our next pick, maybe. Okay, this guy potentially has contact left out of the like crazy roof right now for his present del Gaudio could be generational i'm going del Gaudio, okay it was always del Gaudio. this is my guy wait are you not letting me draft him oh draft i hit the wrong button boy del Gaudio, please be good 
Okay, Philip Shibuya is still on the board. Something tells me Philip Shibuya is that guy. I'm nervous about him. He doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. Is he, is he that guy? His stamina looks crazy. But like his hits per nine, strikeouts per nine, walks per nine, homers per nine, all don't seem like great. They're like above average, but not great. But he's 18, so he could develop like really, really well. I believe in Philip Shibuya. You're coming to Charlotte, buddy. I'm not gonna lie, something about this guy made me think like he could be it. Gene Zimborski. The first time I looked at his stuff, I was like, there may be something here. He's definitely more of like a, a defensive minded guy. Um, you can't see he could potentially have up to 99 speed in the future. But something about this guy tells me that he's more like defense than anything, but he's 18 again. We're gonna take a gamble on him, okay? We're drafting you, Gene. Welcome to Charlotte. Oh, we looked at Robert Fitzgerald a little bit too. What does Robert Fitzgerald got? Oh, I'm seeing a lot of green here. Robert Fitzgerald. You are now one of my employees. 18 year old. A lot of pot mm, potential is actually not that great. Uh, but he's got some green. He's got some green. What does that mean? I have 20 seconds left. I'm drafting Damon. I'm drafting him. Freddie Munoz. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Potential, we feel pretty good about it being a 72 to an 83. His overall could be between a 43 and a 54, below average. How old is he? 21, what are you doing? Baseball's not your thing. All right, honestly, Freddie, I'll give you a chance to play baseball here in Charlotte. You have a nice beard. That means maybe you have attention to detail. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've completed our first draft. I am beside myself. I am panicking, I'm vomiting, I'm throwing up in the car. It's time to see how our players are. All right, so we officially were able to kind of look at our draft picks. We don't know what, they actual, what their actual ratings are yet. So we have to sign them before anything else. And, uh, okay, this is going to be tough. They're suggesting a slot value of 7.7 .7 million. He's only wanting 5.8. Listen, buddy, you're in high school. This is $5.77 million than you were, more than you were making at McDonald's, okay? Declined. I need a few days before I can reconsider another offer. Mother fluffer. Okay. We have other draft picks. Boyd Delgadio. That's really who I drafted in the second round. Oh my God. Uh, we scouted him 5%. His interest, not super high. Um, I'm gonna move him to the number one spot because we need him to have more interest, basically. Oh, you can also scout them more during this time. That's actually incredible. Okay, and then our third one, Gene, okay? He's not quite there in an interest perspective, but we're gonna get there, okay? We can't do anything, can't do anything, and can't do anything. We'll advance and we'll get there. All right, listen, Jermaine, it didn't work out last time. He said he wanted 5.8. That's his demand, okay? I'm gonna make it 6.04, buddy. You're 63% of the way interested. Come on, man. I only have so much money. All right, you know, let's go talk to somebody who's interested here. Robert Fitzgerald, you know, this guy, you know, he's he's working his way there. He only won 638K. MLB suggests 627. I feel like we're good here. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. The other guy did decide to sign. I, I was freaking out. I thought he didn't sign. He did decide to sign. We're good. We got Fitzgerald and we got our other guy. We're Gucci, we're Gucci. Okay, Boyd and Gene, we both cannot sign them because again, we need more time um, for them to get a little bit more interested, but we're still working on that. Philip Shibuya, a guy that we believe in, uh, he went 742. They're suggesting we go up a little bit more. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get him at 742 and we're just going to hope that works. <sighs> I hate you. A little trade just happened in the MLB. The Pirates acquire Bradish from the Orioles. So Kyle Bradish moves from the Orioles to the Pirates. And they get Jack Sawinski, Paul Skeens, whoa, and Rowdy Telez. Paul Skeens getting traded is wild to me. But the Orioles are now going to have him. And the Pirates now get a bona fide number one starter who's struggled a little bit this year. He's 89 overall. This is a big trade. All right, Delgadio still isn't at 50%. Neither is Zimborski, but they're getting there. Uh, Shibuya, we're going to offer him a contract. Um, he didn't want 742 million, so now we have to offer him 872, buddy. I'm running out of money. Please take this, okay? 
ladies and gentlemen, we got him. All right, Freddie Munoz is a guy that we are definitely going to go ahead and try to offer one as well. Uh, he's one in 307. We're going to see if we can get him at that number right here. Buddy, come on now, Freddie. All right, now for the first time, we can sign Gene Simborski. Come on, Gene. <laughs> Please. Let's offer him a contract. He's wanting 930. Um, we don't have a lot of guys to re-sign at this point, so I'm going to offer 989 and just try to get this over with at this point. He declined it? The audacity. All right, we're going to try to offer Freddie Mutos another deal. Uh, he didn't like the last one. Here's uh, almost 80K more. In what world are you declining this? All right, listen, Gene. I've had about enough of your shenanigans, okay? Your potential's dropping by the day. Now you want 854K. MLB suggesting 930. Okay, I'll suggest even more. <laughs> it's about time. All right, Freddie Munoz, I just, you're just frustrating me. MLB suggesting 351. I'm offering you 431 now. Oh, you just decided to sign. It's about time. Boyd Delgadio is 1% away from signing. So we can't offer him a contract right now, but he should get there. And then slowly, Damon Cowan will hopefully, with the last four days left, be able to get a massive percentage jump. But we need these guys to be able to lock in soon. Now, the Guardians are offering us a trade here, trying to give us Daniel Espino, uh, who's 23, 72 overall. Seems like he has pretty good potential. He's got a five pitch repertoire, which is interesting. For our guy, his story Ruiz. Uh, and normally, I might entertain or consider because we also have Drew Jones. But again, one of these guys is going to be moved. And if I'm going to move Ruiz, it's not going to be for a pitcher that, you know, actually, he's only 23 to 72 overall. That I, uh... No, I liked what they were offering me with the Daniel Espino trade, but I wanted to kind of, you know, finagle a little bit more because I thought, you know, for a story Ruiz, I can probably get a little bit more than that. So we're giving up a story Ruiz, Mick Abel and Ken Waldachuk. Mick Abel, just for the record, uh, if you haven't seen his stuff from the live streams, if you're just watching only the YouTube videos, he's two and 12 on the year right now. Uh, he's really struggled with a 6.18 year, right? I get that he, you know, is early on in his career. Will probably be a great pitcher for somebody, maybe the Guardians. We're about to trade him. But we have a lot of young talent. We just got Kumar Rocker, who we're excited to see what he does. We have Brian Bello, who's kind of figuring things out right now early in his season. And we're getting Kyle Manzardo from them, which helps us on first base. We don't really have a good young first baseman. He is struggling, so this is a little bit risky. He's batting 193, has eight homers, 43 RBIs, kind of a boomer bust guy right now for them. But we're still getting Daniel Espino to help out uh, from a starting pitching perspective. And he, on the year for them, is 7 for 8, 454 ERA. Um, he's at a whip of 149. So there's some things to work out with him. But I feel like we've really built a very good pitching staff just through the farm system and all the way up to the major leagues. And now, even though we're losing Ruiz, we have Drew Jones, we have Riley Green, we have James Wood. Our outfield is set. And we got a really good first baseman along with the starting pitcher. We're making this trade. All right, listen, Boyd Delgadio, we have, this is literally our second to last chance. Um, we need to basically sign this man. So we'll see what he ultimately does here. <sighs> Buddy, you want a lot. He wants a lot. They're saying, oh, he was a second rounder. Now they're saying he should get 2.5 mil. I mean, he knows how much money we have. I hope he's as good as he potentially looks right here. Because this, if he is that potential, that sort of overall, we got to steal. Now, we've officially hit the trade deadline. And Bobby Witt Jr. just went to the Twins for Brooks Lee, Jose Miranda, and AJ Alexi. I personally wouldn't have traded him for that. I would have tried to get a whole lot more. But that is a big move for the Twins and for the Royals. All right. Now, our last potential opportunity to sign a draft pick, Damon Cowan. Uh, he's basically slotted. He wants 415. He slotted for 469. We're going to offer 520K. And if he doesn't take this, I'm going to be like this is the French say. Buddy, I offered you more money than what you wanted. Why would you decline? Now we finally get to see what our actual guys are. Okay, so Jermaine Schiavo is actually a 90 actual potential. Boy Delgadio. I think I paid this man handsomely, which is going to piss me off. And he's a 67 potential. This is why I should be do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the scouting to be auto, uh, with a couple of manual ones here and there. Philip Shibuya has a 79 potential. It's actually not terrible for him, but he's 60 overall. What was the overall for this guy? Jermaine's a 58 overall, so he's got a long way to go. 62 for Boyd, 60 for Philip. Uh, Gene Zimborski has 86 potential, which is actually very good. So I'm actually hyped about that. But he's 18, so 56 overall. We get a 61 overall guy in Robert Fitzgerald with a 73 potential. 
Uh, Damon Cowan will never know what his potential was, but he actually just said, no, I won't be coming here. Uh, and then Freddie Munoz, who, you know, was a little finicky with it sometimes. He's a, I think it's a 47. You can't even tell what these numbers half the time, but he's a 76 actual potential. So do we hit anybody that's like great right now? <clears throat> Absolutely not. But we have some guys, a 90 potential, 86 potential, two guys that are in the mid to high 70s, one guy in the low 70s, and then one guy in the 67s. Yes, we missed some Boyd Delgadio a little bit, but for the most part, this has been pretty good. And we also have an opportunity for some contract extensions here. Uh, Christopher Morell is a great guy. We want to get him locked up as soon as we possibly can. He's not super interested in doing, you know, super low money. But if I can offer him four years at eight and a half million at the production he's giving us right now and what he's going to be rated by that time, I am a thousand percent here from it. I would rather avoid arbitration with this guy. So we are going to offer him four years, eight and a half million, and I will gladly take that. A short contract is better. Okay. I respect that. We're giving him, we're saying he's a star. Okay. We're going to change it out and we'll front load it a little bit and I'll even increase it to, uh, honestly, Nine and a half million is still incredible for what we would basically give him. I don't want to be locked into a contract for that long. Okay, let's take a year off. Okay. Let's lower some of the money because you obviously seem to be very intrigued. We'll keep the meter maxed out here. Three years, five and a half million. We say you're going to be a star. And we've got him. I'm here for that. That is going to be cheaper than what we would have had to go through all the arbitration and giving him a long-term deal after that. All right, we're picking up here. Finally getting into our first game. We had a whole lot of stuff we had to do in this episode, but... Uh, we've got a situation going on right now. It is the top of the 10th inning. Hogan Harris in the mound. They have a runner on third base, and we are desperately trying not to give up the run to give them the lead. Lefty versus a righty, always scary. Ah, just missed the outside. Oh, he swung at that. We'll take two strikes now. All right, this is a big play. We're going curveball, kind of running it inside. Got him. Let's go. Way to get out of the inning. Now let's get some runs. All right, Nick Allen's going to be up for us. Let's just take a quick little look and see uh, who potentially... Oh, we had a lot of guys getting a day off. Garrett Hampson, uh, we're going to give him that opportunity for sure. So, yeah, Hampson, you come in with a, a chance to give us that lead. All right, runners on first and second here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Mm. Excuse me, I'm tripping. Only runners on second base. My bad. Not a runner on first. Woo! We did not go. Rain coming down here in Charlotte. We got to try to lock in, though. Oh my God, he got a hold of that one. That's ball game. Are you kidding me, Hampson? Let's go. We might be terrible this year. But we will take a win like this one. Hey, look, Hogan Harris somehow gets player of the game yet again. This man has been pretty good for us in the bullpen all season long, so hats off to him. Uh, but Garrett Hampson came in, pinched it. It was his day off, gets a double and RBI, and gets the W for this team. We don't have a lot of those. Got another big game situation here towards the end of the season. Again, we're just trying to look for some sort of positive momentum. Uh, we're down one. There's two outs. There's a runner on second base. We just do not want to hit into a double play. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he took a little bit to do that. Morell is going to leg it out for a fielder's choice, so we are still alive with two outs right now. And if there's somebody we want to come up, it's James Wood. One for three, a single and a run. Only batting 200 and some change in the season. But it's a dude that's got a lot of power. I forgot he's six foot seven. That strike zone is crazy. That one's going to miss. It's just on a 100 mile an hour gas, though. Golly. We have no business swinging at that one unless a wild throw happens here, which it doesn't. The Giants are going to get the W. We don't deserve it swinging like that. All right, we hit the September call-up point, and we can basically call up, I think, two peoples that we have um, available on our roster right now. So I'm going to bring up Jacob Wilson, who we had at third base. Moved him to shortstop because Garrett Hampson are probably going to let go in a free agency this upcoming season. We have, obviously, a really good third baseman now, Christopher Morrell. So we're going to go ahead and say, Jacob Wilson, uh, you can move to... The major leagues he's now gonna be promoted probably in the majors going into next season uh that'll be our first one and i think the other one honestly is gonna be drew jones he's now our highest rated left fielder uh we're gonna move him to the major leagues because seth brown is injured probably going for the rest of the year and i'm gonna see what drew jones has honestly let's see what he can do we're picking up here with a 4-4 ball game against detroit on second base is riley green by the way uh former detroit tiger but we're trying to see if we can go ahead 
and get the lead with two outs. Oh my God, he smoked one. Does their center fielder catch up to it? That's a grand salami. Are you kidding me? Man, tough break there for Detroit, but that was a massive shot by Manzardo to give us the lead. All right, now we got Shay Langoliers, one of our catchers up. DH is a lot for us today, but right now he's got a chance to extend this lead even further. Two for four in the day for Langoliers. It's jammed on that one. Ah, uh, it's a tough one. That's going to end the inning, but still a four-run extension is something we will never be mad at. All right, we're going to bring in Zach Jackson try to close this game out. Obviously, you know, we've had some ups and downs with Zach Jackson. He raised a little bit too high, but of the 32 opportunities to save the game, he's done 28 of them, so I can't be too mad. Yo, Thomas, thanks for the 500. Hope you're doing well, man. You did you did show up at the right time. All right, just misses on that one. The good news is for Zach Jackson, he's facing the six, seven, eight hitters, but uh, Banya's ahead. Just kind of got on base quick. There we go. Much better start. All right, trying to get him here with the slider. Wow, that slid. Going right back to the same pitch, but just a little bit better. That was way better. All right, Javi Baez is coming up one for three, a single and a run scored for him today, but we're trying to get this man up out of here. Not going to swing at that first one. Just missed his own again, down 2-0 on the count. There we go. I, I'm crying. Javi Baez is still there. Again, we're struggling a little bit, but we get the enough of the benefit of doubt from the umpire. We're going to go right back here. Try to get him on a slider. Oh, check that one. He said that's crazy. We walked him. All right, now we're in a tough spot because Mejia's in. Great first pitch. Need that first pitch strike. If you don't get that sometimes, it is just an extremely tough for a bat. Right back to the circle change. There we go. Desperately need a double play here. That is not a double play, James Wood, please. There we go. Runner moves to third. We got guys in the corners now. All right, top of the order. Matt Veerling's up. He's got a home run, two RBIs. Obviously, you want to be careful of getting a rally going because, again, four runs seems like a lot until you get guys on base like this. And stuff like that happens. Not great. They're going to get one. Now they got runners in the corners yet again. The lemon booty is real right now. Whoa, Zach Jackson, chill. Going right now, I just... I do not trust this bullpen uh, at all. I also realize I'm not the greatest person with pinpoint pitching, but I know it makes the game significantly more tough for me. And now we're down 3-0. What is going on? All right, I'm putting Sky Alexander in. Uh, this is a lefty. I didn't realize he's a lefty until right now. But the bases are loaded and there are two outs. I just need somebody else. Jesus. Yeah, I felt so confident with that grand slam. And then... Uh, what has transpired since then is not good. Sky Alexander's missing a lot. Oh my God. Brother. You know how scared I was just now? We're gonna walk out of here with a W, but it sure didn't feel like it. 